We would like to understand the evolutionary and developmental origin of our limbs, and in particular of our hands and feet, which can show considerable variation in their morphologies amongst vertebrate species. In this work, we focus on a cluster of Hark gene, knowing that five consecutive genes member of this group are essential for the development of digits. They are strongly transcribed in embryonic digits, and we looked for the mechanism underlying this transcriptional control. Interestingly, this gene cluster is flanked by two gene deserts, and Thomas Montavon, who did most of this work, used a chromosome conformation capture approach to see whether the promoters of these active genes contact DNA sequences located within these gene deserts. Thomas realized that many contacts are established, but only in the gene desert located on the side of the active genes. In contrast, when he looked at the contact experienced by the inactive genes of the same cluster, he observed the opposite profile with all contacts touching the other gene desert, as if the gene cluster at the time of gene activation would be split into two separate domains. We concentrated on this gene desert and could identify a series of six prominent sites of contact. Some of these contacts are also observed in a negative tissue, the brain, suggesting that a three-dimensional structure already exists before gene activation. These regulatory islands, as we call them, coincide with the presence of chromatin marks, which are known to decorate enhancer sequences, such as monomethyl K4 or the acetylation of K27. In addition, four such sequences, at least, can drive expression of a reported gene in digits when introduced into a transgenic animals, as shown here for two cases. We assess the function of these regulatory islands under physiological conditions in vivo by generating a set of contiguous deletions as well as combination thereof. When we delete this part of the gene desert, expression in digit goes down to 60% and a subtle defect appears in newborns. If we remove another piece of the desert, expression goes down to 50%, and yet another subtle defect appears. When we start to combine these deletions, then expression goes down accordingly, and the defect becomes stronger. Finally, when the entire gene desert is removed, transcription of these genes in digits is virtually abolished. We propose a model whereby, in inactive cells, the gene desert adopts a ground state structure. In active cells, the addition of some factors leads to the formation of an active structure made out of several islands, each of them participating qualitatively or quantitatively to the final outcome. We call this a regulatory archipelago. Such a complex regulatory strategy helps to explain how hands and feet can be so different amongst various tetrapods, as it may be quite easy to modulate the outcome of the system, but at the same time, it makes it very robust, since small changes in the gene desert will only have moderate effects upon the final forms. Finally, such archipelagos may explain the reason why many human families with genetic syndromes affecting the number and or the shape of digits and mapping around this gene cluster have completely normal Hox genes. Should a small deletion occur in the gene desert, should an inversion breakpoint occur in the gene desert, this would immediately affect the global transcriptional outcome and generate an abnormal phenotype.